Would you like to get better at drawing bodies? Or are you new to art and don't know where to even start studying anatomy? Then keep watching this video where I'll share with you all my tricks and knowledge to get better at drawing a human figure. Hello everyone! How are you doing? I'm Rina, and as I just mentioned, this will be the long-awaited anatomy tutorial! Well, perhaps tutorial isn't the right word in this case, but I hope you will learn something from my explanations. Today's video, by the way, is sponsored by Clip Studio Paint once again. Clip Studio Paint is a digital art software, and the one I currently use to create all my artwork it's super powerful, with lots of brushes that resemble traditional tools, and cool options to speed up your workflow. Plus, a super caring community where you can find dozens of tutorials about many subjects, and even more free brushes made by other users. Even though you don't need Clip Studio Paint to follow along with today's video, we're going to see a couple of features from this program that are super helpful for drawing bodies. So, consider getting it in the future. I can't stop recommending this program to all illustrators out there. Whether you're a hobbyist, artist, or a professional, Clip Studio Paint will surely cover all your needs. And after this small intro, let's get to the point! This video contains images of both real bodies and anatomical models. If bones, muscles, and nudity or partial nudity make you uncomfortable, Please do not watch any further. So, how to learn anatomy? How to draw bodies? Most artists will respond with, just practice, because honestly, there is not one simple way to answer something that involves such a long and complex process. Even in today's video, I'll have to sum it up a lot, but I hope it will be helpful for most of you, or at least it will lead you towards the right path. Many professionals break this down into different steps or levels, like first you need to learn the bones, then the muscles, then draw this way or the other. I don't like doing that because we are all different. Each one of us is at a different stage of our lives. We've got different priorities, interests, tools, etc. And I know how tedious the simplest tasks can become when you just don't have the right mindset for them. It's like when parents force their child to study law, for example, and maybe the kid just wants to be a chef or a carpenter. When you're forced to study something you don't care about, it becomes all the more complicated. So instead of telling you in which order you should practice everything, I thought it's better if I just showed you different ways to expand your knowledge about the human body. And then you can decide which is the most appealing or helpful for you right now. All the following methods are tightly connected anyway, so it's hard for me to give them a specific order. First tip I'm going to share with you is Observation is key. A good artist is like an owl. They'll stare at their subject for hours and absorb knowledge through just their eyes, so they can decide their next step. You need to develop critical eyes. This means whenever you stare at the wall around you, try to pay attention to the shapes of anything, to the colors, the texture of a surface, its movement even, literally anything, any detail. The purpose of this practice is not so you can draw everything from imagination, but for you to build some basic theoretical concepts of 3D sense and volumes. For example, a circle is just a circle until you add some shading into it, but if you just fill half of it with no sort of logic, it will never look like a 3D object. Instead, we have to go over the lower edge, for example, and create a soft gradient. Now it does look like a real ball. See the difference between the first attempt and the second? But you can't just add soft gradients around the edges of every object and expect it to look good. If we do just that on a cube, 
you can't really tell where the light is coming from, so it's hard to understand its depth. In this specific case, the first approach of shading is way more helpful. We give the three visible sides a different color value and voila! A perfect cube with logical depth. This is the kind of knowledge that you will learn by constantly observing your surroundings. Every object and shape has a different way to be drawn. The second tip is go from the most abstract and basic shapes to the most complex and realistic ones. You've probably seen many artists structure their bodies on their drawings with spheres, cubes, rectangles, cylinders at first, and then they build detail on top of it. This is pretty useful to get a basic idea of the overall shape of the body. At this stage, you can also make sure everything is symmetric or has the right length before you spend too much time on tiny details you might have to erase in the end because your proportions were off to start with. Each artist separates the body differently. Some people will split the torso into two parts, while others will do it in three. Some will use very harsh angles, while others go for softer shapes with more curves. Sometimes we don't even stick to one exact method, but we change it depending on the nature of the drawing. That happens a lot to me. I suggest watching many time lapses from several artists to get ideas from them. These basic shapes, by the way, should take perspective into account. So if you're struggling with that too, you can dedicate a bit of your time to studying how geometrical shapes change their sizes and angles depending on the perspective. You can do it with simple objects from your daily life, like a mug, a box you may have lying around. Observe these objects from different angles and try to redraw them. Then compare all the results. It's like a sort of spot the difference game. <laughs> Usually, though, the closer something is to our eyes, the bigger it will look compared to the rest. So if we're looking at a person from below, their feet and legs will look bigger than their head. And if we look at them from above, the head will seem bigger than the feet. Even the inner curves and lines of the shapes change their nature. They will curve downwards if our eye is above the subject and the other way around. If you pay attention to these two masses, their outer shape is the same, but the inner lines are different and so the perspective for each of them changes. Therefore, perspective is important, my friends. <laughs> it's a pain to master, but it's really helpful. So if you struggle with it, it's definitely worth to make some studies with basic cube and cylinder-like shapes. Next up, we have the muscles and bones. Nobody told you that in order to become an artist you need to study a bit of biology too, right? <laughs> well, that's how things work. To draw a human body with not so many struggles, you have to learn about our internal gear too. It's important that you understand the shape of the bones and muscles, how all of them are connected, how the muscles stretch or relax depending on the pose. You can do that by, for example, studying those scientific models we've all seen in biology books, tracing the shapes you see, copying them, and also a very interesting exercise is to grab any random photo and try to draw the skeleton or muscles on top of it. Another important aspect of all this muscle stuff is that the different parts of the body overlap over one another, and you have to learn and understand that too. This is something that mixes the perspective knowledge I was talking about earlier with the biology knowledge I just mentioned. 
We can't just draw cylinders and cups and spheres and expect them to look like an actual human. Our bodies are organic. All of our muscles and bones are connected in a way that makes it possible for us to stay upright and to move too. These connections are the overlapping I'm talking about. Every geometrical shape goes into another and the muscles twist, relax and tense depending on the pose and the angle from which we're seeing them. Most of the time, this overlapping thing can be done with just a few lines here and there. But you have to know where to place them to give your drawing the illusion of 3D. They usually appear where two pieces of the human puzzle connect. In other words, joints like the armpit, elbow, wrist, but also places like the collarbone, neck and jawline. Because there's a bunch of muscles involved in that part of the body. See the importance of biology now? <laughs> Knowing the shape, placement and functions even of our muscles can make these little details a lot easier to spot. An example that really helped me years ago was thinking about the arm as if it was a chain. The shoulder goes in this direction but the next part of the arm is connected at the opposite angle, and so on. Stuff like this looks really scary and confusing when you're not familiar with the shape of the muscles, which leads me to the next point. Use references. I'm tired of repeating this all the time, but when you don't know how to draw something, you can't just expect a miracle to happen. No, you go on Google or books or wherever and search for references for that specific thing you're trying to draw. The more varied, the better. You've probably heard about professional artists doing anatomy studies now and then, and this is exactly what they do. They go on websites like Quick Poses or Pose Maniacs and just redraw random poses from the photos they can find there. This is a great practice as it gives you the chance to see different body builds, but not just that, you can observe, remember the first tip? <laughs> you can observe how the muscles relax or tense. You can see these overlapping lines I mentioned in the previous point. You can see how they change depending on the angle of the photo. Observe. Absorb that knowledge and then try to draw it and implement it little by little on your own art. You don't even have to redraw the entire body. You can just focus on a specific part if that's better for you. For example, just draw the hands or the legs or the chest. There are so many places where you can get lots of pose references and useful resources. On Instagram, for example, you've got Manga Materials and Taco, on DeviantArt, Senshi Stock, and here on YouTube, you can watch Ergo Josh's channel. I'll leave you all the links in the description box so you can check them out later. The problem with finding references is that you can't always find a certain pose at the specific angle you need it. That's a common issue since we artists like to torture ourselves. <laughs> you can always try to take a peek of yourself, but depending on the perspective you're going for, it might just be impossible. Here's where Clip Studio Paint comes in handy. And I gotta say, this is probably one of the best features this program has. Clip Studio Paint has 
3D models you can pose however you prefer. You can move pretty much everything, even their fingers, and you can experiment with the angle as much as you want. The way they work is as follows. Hover over the part you'd like to move and click on it. Three different colored axes will appear. Each one controls a different direction. Side to side, up and down, and rotation. So you just move those axes to place that specific part of the body the way you need it. Instead of adjusting specific parts one by one, you can hover over one of the circles located in every joint and pull them. The body parts connected to that specific joint will move along with it. This is a lot harder to control, but it might be helpful at some point. These models are pretty customizable. You can directly input the height of the body and even change the proportions of the head if you want a more realistic or cartoonish approach. You can change the body build easily through this grid and make it look more mature or androgynous, fat or thin. It's got a panel to pose the hands and fingers quickly too. It comes with a few default fists and we can easily open and close the fingers through this triangle section moving the cross towards one icon or the other. A very useful trick is to choose one of the fist shapes, then block any of the fingers to stay in that position with the chain icon. The unchained finger will respond to the changes we apply through the triangle section. And, of course, we can always keep adjusting the position of each finger directly on the model with the axis I have previously shown you. We're not done yet, though. <laughs> There's a few more interesting things you can do with Clip Studio 3D models. There's a manga perspective option that can be very helpful for when you want to make some foreshortening. You just have to click on it, choose the intensity, and the proportions of the model will change accordingly to that fake perspective. We can also change the lighting that falls onto the models, move it around, and change its intensity and color. Pretty useful to help develop your sense of volume. Some people still find posing these models too complicated or time-consuming. But here's the good thing. You've got tons of free poses on the Assets page. You can download something that's similar to what you're looking for, drag it onto the model, and make any adjustments to fit your idea. I particularly love this hand model, it's super helpful for me. It's not free, but I'll leave you links in the description box in case you wanted to. This user has got different models for more muscular hands, more feminine ones, and even feet. I wouldn't heavily rely on these 3D models to correct my anatomy as they don't have muscles that change with the tension of the pose and neither can you really see the overlapping lines, but they're a great tool for when you're not so sure about a pose or when you want to try different angles without making dozens of sketches. I find it really impressive that a drawing software comes with such a detailed and helpful feature specially tailored for artists. Which, by the way, you can try these 3D models for free by downloading Clip Studio Paint free trial. Another little trick I just remembered about this that might be useful for some is to use Clip Studio Paint's stroke feature to easily recognize any overlapping parts. You basically just need to create a new layer, go to the Layers property panel, remember you can enable it through the Window tab if it's not visible yet, click on the left icon and choose a dark color. Maybe even add a bit more width so the effect is more noticeable. 
Now everything you draw on this layer will have a dark edge. How is that useful? You can keep on making layers with that effect and placing them below or on top of the first one to build a basic idea of the human body with simple perspective. Pro tip! Create an action to make a new layer with that specific effect to speed up the process. Next tip I've got is of my own making, and it may sound strange at first, but hear me out. Don't practice through every little drawing you make. When you want to practice anatomy, practice anatomy. And when you work on illustrations, do just that, but don't mix them up. I used to make this mistake when I was younger, and then I felt very frustrated with my art, because it took me many hours to finish one simple piece. And it's because I spent way too much time perfecting the anatomy that I would have to cover later with clothes anyway. The day I realized I wasn't really saving time by doing both things at once, but actually I was slowing myself down, I split it into two different processes. And I found that I felt much more focused on just learning whenever I did anatomy studies, and much more comfortable and lighter when I did illustrations, because then I could solely focus on creating. Let's be logical. What's the point of drawing a perfectly realistic body of a beautiful model if you're gonna cover it with a big hoodie in the end? It's just a lot easier and it makes a lot more sense to aim for the final silhouette from the start. There is no need for you to practice or study anatomy several hours a day. Even just 10 minutes every few days is good. The point is for it to become a healthy practice that you can adapt to your drawing schedule. And remember, 90% of it is a matter of observing and absorbing knowledge through your eyes. If your brain understands how the real body works, that knowledge will transform easier into your hands. And my last advice is do not stress about learning. Drawing should be a joy and not something that puts you in a bad mood. I remember back in the days I'd see pro artists talk all the time about using geometrical shape to build the basic shape of a human body. And when I tried that for the first time, yes, I did find it useful to some degree, but I felt it was too much work for me at that time and it also made my drawings look kind of stiff, mostly because I didn't really know what I was doing. <laughs> my sense of 3D and perspective weren't that good at that time. So whenever I tried to use that method, it made me not want to keep drawing or abandon pieces I was super excited about. And that's because I wasn't ready for that step yet. Perhaps I needed to focus more on learning the muscles or basic perspective. Nowadays, I do find that method useful, because my point of view is different now. That specific bit of knowledge that made little sense when I was a silly teenager means everything now. This is why I want you all to take my advice with a grain of salt. This video is not a strict guide you have to follow to master anatomy. You have to choose your own learning path, not someone else. I could tell you all to go take a biology course and don't draw a thing until you know the position of every single bone, muscle, tendon in the human body. For some people, that could work, and for others, it could completely cut short their art journey because they're simply not interested in that type of scientific knowledge at the beginning. So try different things. Play with shapes and styles. It doesn't matter if things don't look realistic. Just try to keep them proportioned in some way. 
And even if you don't find some of my advice useful at the moment, try to watch this video again after some time. Maybe then my explanations will make a lot more sense because you might have gathered the necessary knowledge to put them to use. By the way, all the tips and advice I have explained today aren't just a one-time thing. Even if you make some very intense studying about muscles and become a master in a few weeks, you want to keep practicing them throughout your artistic journey, to keep things fresh, because we're human, we forget about stuff sometimes, and it shouldn't be a shame to go over subjects you've already covered, just to make sure your knowledge is still on point. And this would be it for today's anatomy tutorial. Thank you so much to Clip Studio Paint once again for sponsoring such a long and complex video. <laughs> if you guys are interested in the program and its awesome 3D models, they offer a free trial both for the desktop version and the app that can go up to three months. So you really have no excuse to at least download the trial version and try the 3D models for yourself. If you've made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. I know it's long and I surely haven't covered everything, but it's honestly impossible to explain such a complex subject like anatomy in a single video. The fact that artists are constantly learning anatomy throughout their lives should already ring a bell for you. <laughs> Hopefully next time I can make a video about how to choose poses for your drawing that kind of complements what I've explained here today. Don't forget to like the video, share it around with your artist friends and subscribe to my channel. And remember that you can help me create more tutorials by supporting me on Patreon where you can get lots of exclusive content from me, such as high resolution of all my art, weaves, early access, and layered files to learn how I make my illustrations. Thank you so much for watching, and see you on the next video. Take care, everyone!